What's up guys? I haven't been tracking my calories or macros recently. That's probably why I'm a little bit out of shape, but in all seriousness, I do have some clients that don't track. Most of them do, but some of them don't. Now, depending on what type of person you are, I actually recommend that some people don't track their calories and macros. So in this video, I'm gonna break down who should be tracking, who shouldn't be tracking. I'm also gonna give you five tips that you absolutely must do if you're not tracking your calories and macros gonna, because it's gonna make it so much easier for you to get lean, get those abs popping, get those biceps out. And I'm also gonna give you one thing that you absolutely must be doing if you don't wanna track your calories and macros. This is a non-negotiable, this is not a tip. Every single one of my clients does this because it literally takes less than a minute to do and it is will make your whole fitness journey, regardless of whether you wanna lose fat or build muscle or whatever, make it 10 times easier. All right, so let's dive into it. Who should be tracking and who shouldn't? Well, it really depends on your goals, okay? If you have extremely high goals and you wanna be in the best shape of your life and you also, you wanna do it as fast as possible, well then of course, you need to be tracking your calories and macros. Now tracking calories and macros is not perfect, okay? It's still an estimate, but it's so much better than not tracking your calories and macros. And especially if you've never done this before, how many calories you think you're eating compared to how many you actually are is probably way off, okay? So I actually recommend for most people, even if you don't wanna track your calories and macros long-term, just do it for about two to three months. Because in that two to three month period, you're gonna learn so much about, oh, this is how much, uh, you know, 50 grams of protein looks on my plate. This is how much, you know, 50 grams or 100 grams of carbohydrates looks on your plate. And after a while, you'll start to realize that you eat the same meals over and over again. And you'll start to understand, you know, how many calories and macros are in certain foods and you'll be able to eyeball it and estimate it. Now, it's not perfect, of course, and if you're trying to get in absolutely sick shape, if you wanna get shredded to the bone, if you wanna go on stage, or you just wanna go as fast as possible, then you really, you should be tracking your calories and macros, but some people, you know, they just come to me and they're just like, look, I just want an easy solution, I just wanna lose 10, 15 pounds. I don't care if it takes a couple of months. I just wanna, I just want it to be nice and easy. And you know, I don't really wanna have to do too much. If you're that sort of person, then I wouldn't recommend tracking calories and macros because what I've seen happen a few times is, you know, you, you're forcing yourself to track your calories and macros and you know, you just you don't want to do it you end up not doing it and then you end up completely falling off the bandwagon so instead of doing that it just comes down to okay well how do we make smarter food choices or what things can we implement to make it easier for you to stick to a calorie deficit so that you lose fat and that brings me on to the five steps the five tips sorry okay so the first tip is time restricted eating also called intermittent fasting now if you're not familiar with this this is where you consume all of your calories in a shorter window so typically for most of my clients skipping breakfast seems to work the best and a two meal a day approach works well if i ever want to get lean uh, and actually, when I got the leanest I've ever been in my entire life, I actually made a previous video on this, which I'll, I'll link somewhere at the end of this one. I wasn't tracking my calories or macros. I was just having two meals a day at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. And that was it. So one option is for you to condense your eating window into a shorter time period. Maybe you do eight hours, maybe you do uh, midday to 8 p.m. It really depends on when you wake up and when you go to bed. But for most people, skipping breakfast is not that hard to do. And if you have a shorter eating window, typically you're gonna consume less calories. Not always, but it does make it easier to consume less calories. So the first tip for you would be to skip breakfast. Now, if that gets a little bit hard for you, what you can do is have coffee. Coffee is an appetite suppressant. It'll also raise your metabolic rate, so it'll make it easier for you to uh, burn fat. Also, you could consider green tea. That's also st gonna stimulate your metabolism and um, suppress your appetite. You could also look at, you know, 
other kind of like caffeinated beverages. I wouldn't really recommend these, but coffee, green tea, something like that, you really can't go wrong. That would be my first tip for you. The second tip, and I see guys make this mistake all the time. They go to the gym and after the gym, they'll go in the spa and they'll order a protein shake, okay? And their goal is like, you know, they're pretty overweight and they're just trying to lose weight. The main reason they're going to the gym is to, to lose fat. But they've been to the gym and then they go and order this big protein shake with like banana and, you know, loads of dates and like loads of stuff in there. And this is like a massive calorie drink, which is more calories than they would have burned in their training session. So they've gone to the gym to lose weight and they've actually ended up consuming more calories than if they hadn't have gone to the gym at all. So really like one of the golden rules of fat loss is to not consume any liquid calories, okay? So any liquid calories, and I'm not talking about, you know, in your coffee when you have a little bit of milk, no problem, that's absolutely fine. But smoothies, uh, you know, there's, you know, your, your coffees that you get from Starbucks, the Frappuccinos and the stuff with all the double cream and triple cream and all the crap in there, they've got so many calories in there. You don't wanna be having those things. Uh, smoothies, protein shakes, shakes are for fakes, guys. I'm not a big fan of protein shakes unless you absolutely need them, but necessarily, if you're trying to lose fat, I would not recommend protein shakes at all. So that's number two. Number three is plan for food cravings, okay? Because let's be honest, they're gonna come, okay? We already know ahead of time that you're gonna have cravings, so what's your plan for them? And for most people, it's typically around the 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. window. That's usually where most people trip up. I'd say like 80% of people do pretty good before six, but after 6 p.m., that's when it seems to get most people. So let's have a plan in place. What's gonna be your plan when you have the sugar cravings. Maybe you've got some diet soda on hand, some Coke Zero or something like that. Or maybe you have some, for me, I really like lemon and ginger tea. If I like get sugar cravings, I just have some lemon and ginger tea. You've got to find what works best for you, but we know ahead of time that at some point you're going to have cravings for some of your favorite foods. So what can we do to mitigate that? What is going to be the plan of action when you start getting food cravings? That's number three. Number four, I shouldn't really have to say this one, but I still, I, I do, <laughs> is to eat whole foods, okay? If you eat shit, what, what I find is if my diet's clean, I don't really get many cravings and I'm good. But as soon as I have a little bit of shit, you know, as soon as I have a little bit of sugar or a little bit of something naughty, that is it. It's like a switch is flicked and I am just in binge mode, <laughs> okay? So the best thing to do is to not have any crap whatsoever and a lot of the stuff like 80 percent of the food in the supermarkets is basically junk food so the golden rule when it comes to whole foods is you know does it have a list of ingredients because any food which is a whole food typically it doesn't even have a list of ingredients like a banana is a banana an apple is an apple a chicken breast is a chicken breast an egg is an egg etc etc now if you buy something and it's got a few ingredients and they're all pretty like natural and you recognize all the names, like no big deal. But if you buy something and it's got a list of like 20 to 30 different ingredients that you can't even pronounce, then maybe you're better off not eating those things. So if you eat shit, you're gonna feel like shit, you're gonna want to eat more shit, and then you're gonna end up looking like shit. So I would not recommend eating crap foods, keep it clean, keep it healthy, and that is gonna fill you up for longer, and it's also gonna reduce those cravings, which is likely where you're gonna trip up. And on to number five is 15K steps every single day. Now, if you don't wanna track your calories and macros, no problem but tracking your steps is easy. There's so many ways to do this. I'm pretty sure the phone can do this, but there's things you can buy, like your watch can do this, or you can get like a aura ring, or there's many different options for tracking your steps. Tracking the steps is not the hard part, it's actually doing them, but if you just did 15K steps every single day, you had two meals a day, you, didn't have, you had a plan for when you uh, had food cravings, you didn't consume any liquid calories and you ate whole foods, I refuse to believe that you would not get lean. Like it's, it's almost impossible. You would have to be an absolute idiot during your eating window 
to not get lean in that situation, okay? So they are the five tips. Now, what is the one thing that you absolutely must do for this to work properly? And you cannot skip this step. I have some of my clients come to me and they go, yeah, yeah, I've been weighing myself every Friday. No, do not do that. You need to weigh yourself every single day. It's non-negotiable and it takes 10 seconds, okay? Literally, I wake up, I go to the toilet and then I'm cleaning my teeth and I stand on the scales. It, it's literally a 10 second job and do that every single morning. And the reason why you wanna do that is for feedback. Are you going in the right direction? If your weight keeps getting heavier every single day and you're trying to lose weight, well, we know something's wrong. Like, for example, for me, last week, I had a bit of a binge, okay? I've just quit coffee recently. I might make a video on this. If, you, if, that, if that would interest you, let me know. But I've just quit coffee, okay? So my appetite has been through the roof. I've been eating way more food than I normally have. And I've been going to this all-you-can-eat steakhouse. And every time I go there, it's pretty much three, three and a half, sometimes 4,000 calories in one meal, <laughs> okay? It's ridiculous. I went three times last week. So I look at, and I, every single morning I weigh myself, I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to sort something out here because it, it's just getting to the point where it's ridiculous. I'm like four kilos heavier than, than I normally would be, right? So if you weigh yourself every single morning, you start to see a trend because the weight is gonna fluctuate every single day, you know, based on how much water you're holding and based on, you know, the different types of foods you've eaten the day before and how much activity you've done and how much you've been sweating. So your weight is fluctuates a bit, but if you weigh yourself every single day and then you take an average over the week, you get a much clearer picture of what direction you're heading in. And then you can compare averages from one week to the next and you know if what you're doing is helping you, if you're going in the right direction. Now, one more thing. If you're looking for the easiest and quickest way to quickly lose belly fat, go and watch this video over here. And if you wanna know why 93% of people never lose their belly fat, that's right. Most people never manage to get lean and never lose their belly fat. I don't want that to be you. So go and watch this video here and I'll see you in the next one.